Hello, and thank you for joining the Cleveland Clinic Experience. It is a privilege to welcome our friends from around the world. Each of you is a member of Cleveland Clinic's extended family. With your support, we're able to do more good through our mission, caring for life, researching for health, educating those who serve. For more than a century, this noble cause has brought us together. It guides us to envision new possibilities in patient care. We are passionate about delivering the best care possible. To do that, our priorities are simple. We care for patients, caregivers, our community, and Cleveland Clinic. In this program, I will give you an update on how we are leading. We set goals to deliver the safest care anywhere and become the best place to work in healthcare. We also strive to meet the unique needs of our community and treat this organization as our home. Finally, with your help, we are advancing our mission. The contemporary healthcare landscape is ever-changing. Over the past two years, it has been shaped by the COVID-19 pandemic's many challenges. COVID increased the complexity of care, which caused hospital safety and quality to decrease. Caregivers are now leaving healthcare careers because of the added strain. The communities we serve are experiencing multiple public health crises. Lastly, there are greater financial pressures from supply chain issues to increasing cost of care. These are national trends. Let's review each of them along with Cleveland Clinic's performance. Beyond the tragic loss of life, the pandemic affected every aspect of care delivery. Safety, quality, and experience metrics are declining across the United States. For example, there are more bloodstream infections during hospital stays. Fewer patients say they are satisfied with their care. Meanwhile, payers are asking for more value in healthcare services. That means better outcomes at a lower cost. New competitors are also disrupting the market. They use technology to bring care into the home which is convenient and attractive to patients. Thankfully, Cleveland Clinic is staying ahead. During the pandemic, we reduced the rate of preventable errors called serious safety events. Our care is now safer than ever, and we are committed to zero harm. The highest measure of quality is when patients return home to their families. We deliver the most complex care, and our survival rate is among the best anywhere. Later in this program, you will hear an example how we performed life-saving heart surgery on a fetus. When patients feel like they're part of a team, their experience improves. We are now holding daily plan of care visits with the majority of patients and their loved ones. Externally, our care is validated by raters and rankers. Cleveland Clinic is consistently named among the top hospitals in the world. Yesterday, we were thrilled to be named number one in heart care for 28 years running. Our reputation is shining and demand for our services has never been greater. We're making it easier and more seamless to access care. Patients appreciate that we reach out to them via digital tools. Last year, Cleveland Clinic performed more than 10 million outpatient and virtual visits. The best place to receive care should also be the best place to work in healthcare. Our most precious resource is our caregivers. And right now, there are unprecedented workforce challenges due to COVID-19. In every hospital, caregivers feel more demands at work and at home. Burnout is reaching record levels. The work environment itself has changed. Healthcare workers endure more violence than any other occupation. Our workforce is aging, and many caregivers are taking early retirement. Resignations are also on the rise. Staffing agencies offer to fill the gap, but they lure away caregivers with highly paid contracts, and this burdens our ability to serve patients. Hospitals are raising pay to keep talent. Still, there are two million open jobs in healthcare. Cleveland Clinic is not immune to these challenges. Yet we overcome them through our major strength, being organized as a team of teams. We're 72,000 caregivers. The workplace we create will be safe, supportive, diverse, and inclusive, 
with appropriate compensation and lifelong learning. When caregivers speak up about violence, we stand behind them. Their voices have led to more security and training to respond to threats. Cleveland Clinic partners with caregivers to understand their lives. Then, we redirect resources to them and their families. We invested in market-leading pay. Our benefits package is among the most generous, covering health, wealth, and household affairs. Caregivers should reflect the patients we serve, and we're intentional about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have built stronger, more engaged teams. The Jack, Joseph, and Morton Mandel Foundation invested in our future. With this generous gift, we continuously develop our 5,000 influential leaders. As we think about the pandemic's impact, we must talk about public health. We have learned that no one can be safe and healthy until everyone is safe and healthy. Therefore, health equity must be our imperative. Unfortunately, disparities still exist for many communities and ethnicities. Cleveland Clinic, has a strong commitment to the communities we serve. We're taking action to restore health for all. The opioid epidemic continues to be a great tragedy. To prevent addiction, our clinicians have reduced opioid prescriptions and offer alternatives for managing pain. Mental health diseases increased during the pandemic, which has been devastating to our youngest patients. Cleveland Clinic is the largest mental health provider in Ohio and we are investing in more pediatric behavioral services. In America, black infants are four times more likely to die before their first birthday. We offer centering pregnancy, which gives patients better access to prenatal care while supporting their basic needs. Every year, lead poisoning harms 1,000 children in Cleveland. We donated more than $50 million to remove lead paint from aging homes. Nothing determines health more than access to nutritious food. Our partnerships have brought a Myers grocery market to the Fairfax neighborhood. These are the actions of an anchor institution. Cleveland Clinic heals, hires, and invests for the public good. We are the largest employer in many communities we serve. In Cleveland, we hire more than 1,000 new residents a year. Cleveland Clinic is a founding member and the leading performer in 110. This initiative will create family sustaining jobs for one million black Americans. Fulfilling our mission has a far reaching impact. Across Ohio, Florida, Nevada, Cleveland Clinic generates $35 billion of economic activity. Through accessible care, outreach and research, our community benefit is now 1.3 billion dollars. Globally, the pandemic and other large conflicts have created economic uncertainty. In healthcare, the result has been declining financial performance. Almost every U.S. hospital lost money in the first half of this year, with an average operating loss of 3%. Supply chain disruptions made it more expensive to provide care. Pharmaceutical prices have risen with inflation. Many hospitals face insolvency due to these pressures. To keep the doors open, they join health systems, leading to faster consolidation and more competition. Systems are also competing with payers. Optum, which is part of United Healthcare, has become the nation's largest employer of physicians. Cleveland Clinic is a financially strong organization, yet this year we're experiencing the same losses as other hospitals. As we navigate challenging times, we must be able to compete at scale. We believe that our ethical obligation is to grow and extend our high quality care to as many patients as possible. Our global system includes 21 hospitals and more than 200 outpatient locations. We reinvest in growth in multiple ways. Firstly, we build where we already have a presence. In Ohio, we're expanding the Cole Eye Institute and building the first integrated neurological hospital. In Florida, our capacity has grown sevenfold. In Abu Dhabi, our cancer center will open this year. We also go to new geographies. In London, our youngest hospital is now serving patients from across Europe. Partnerships 
let us explore opportunities such as Northwest Arkansas and the Southwest coast of Florida. Finally, we use technology to enhance care and reach more patients. Through Amwell, our clinicians can give second opinions online. No matter how we grow, we will always work together as a system, delivering uniform care as one Cleveland Clinic. Growth extends to all aspects of our mission. Research funding is the seed for tomorrow's treatments. Our researchers have secured more than $300 million in grants. We're investing heavily into the Cleveland Innovation District, a public-private partnership. Combined with our Florida Research and Innovation Center, we are building a network of scientists who will improve care for the world. Our Global Center for Pathogen and Human Health Research has already started. This team is attracting the best minds in the virology and vaccine development. To solve complex problems, we innovate. Our bionic arm sounds like a science fiction. Yet, patients who have worn it say it is all too real. We educate future caregivers to deliver the best care. Our graduate medical education program is one of the largest with more than 2,000 trainees. The Cleveland Clinic Learner College of Medicine, a tuition-free school, is made possible by philanthropy. It was one of the first schools to go cadaver-free, teaching human anatomy through virtual reality. You will hear more later in this program. All of this work is possible because of you. Your support is what fuels us to dream, hope, and discover. I would like to personally thank each of our donors for the impact you make on our patients and caregivers. In reviewing today's trends, I shared how we lead in the present. Yet Cleveland Clinic always looks ahead. We are working on a landmark project to transform care for future generations. Neurological disorders will impact a billion people we lack the understanding of when brain disease develops, which inhibits treatment. The Cleveland Clinic Brain Study seeks to change that. You will hear more about the study from our experts. First, let's listen to a few volunteers and why they are participating. He just was extraordinarily genuine. He understood people. He found the good in people very quickly. I practiced law with him. And then when we bought the team, it was the two of us. My father, who is 91 right now, is Alzheimer's. He's been impacted by it for nearly a decade now. I have spent my entire adult life working with my father. I've lost that, and I dearly miss it. He's still here, and he's still my father, and there's that twinkle that is still there. But he's not the same person, and, and it's hard when, when you, you lose them before you lose them. My mom was fun. <laughs> she loved to have family around. She was one of those little short firecrackers, you know, dynamite comes in small packages, and she was one of those people. She loved life. She loved, she loved everything. She was one of my very best friends. My grandmother, my mother, and three of my aunts have been affected by Alzheimer's. The physical person is the person that you still know and your mind still reacts to but the spiritual emotion person is gone. It's not that. It's so hard to see my mother and know it's not really my mother. The value of the Cleveland Clinic Brain Study is just, it is so vast because there are so many neurological diseases that they don't know as much about. When someone is diagnosed with a neurological disease, more often than not, it's just too late. This is an effort to find out where it starts, how it starts, and really give people hope that we can not only cure them, but prevent them. I was the very first participant in the Cleveland Clinic Brain Study, and that makes me feel good that I am able to give back. I knew the moment I heard about it that I was gonna participate in it. I've been involved with the clinic for a long time, and I do a lot of different things. It's a different way to engage. In some ways, it feels more real than anything else I've done. Medicine is always learning, it's always progressing, but I never thought that as a single person that I could make a contribution. I have two sons who are 29 and 26 at this moment. I hope by the time they're my age, 
there'll be a general understanding of what causes these types of diseases. I may not be around to see that day, but it's work like the brain study that may make that day possible. Everything they can learn has just got help. It can help someone else, someone else's child, that they don't have to go through this. The brightest minds are leading Cleveland Clinic's brain study. A few of these experts join us today. Dr. Andre Machado, Chair of the Neurological Institute, Dr. Imad Najum, Director of our Epilepsy Center, Dr. Tara De Silva, Associate Professor and Vice Chair, Department of Neurosciences, and Dr. Badi Adada, Chair of the Neurological Institute, Cleveland Clinic, Florida. Thank you all for participating. Andre, let's start with you. What's the overall aim of this study? and how does it promise to improve brain health for future generations, our children and grandchildren? The objective of this study is to uh, understand what happens during the silent phase of neurological disease, the silent phase of brain disease. These are the years that precede the diagnosis of a neurological disease when the devastation is already occurring in the brain but the symptoms have not become obvious. And it opens an opportunity for us to simultaneously understand the causes of neurological disease and to develop treatments that may prevent neurological diseases from happening in the first place. Why has no one else attempted a study of this magnitude before? And how is Cleveland Clinic prepared to do so? The multiple studies all over the world have been done in order to uh, target neurodegenerative disorders. The main problem with these studies has been always that they've been following or studying patients after the first symptom and during the disease progression. Us here at Cleveland Clinic, we are uniquely positioned because of our resources that we have at Cleveland Clinic and because of our donors and the community support to do exactly what Andre mentioned, which is to look at the disease before it happens and to try to understand what are the risk factors of these diseases before they do happen and more importantly, to identify biomarkers that could be targets for diagnosis or targets for treatment leading later on to the cure of neurodegenerative disorder and ultimately to prevent some of these devastating diseases from happening. The sheer size of this study is the reason it has never been done. This is an ambitious proposition, but it's also a game changer. Most academic medical organizations would think this is absurd and from their perspective, it probably is. It is not absurd for Cleveland Clinic. We can do this because we are a global organization with the talent and the human resources and the overall resources necessary to pull this off. Imad and Tara, could you speak more about the study itself? Each volunteer is subject to multiple studies, including an eye scan, a brain scan, a neurocognitive testing, an EEG, overnight EEG, a sleep study, neurological exam, and multiple other studies, including blood samples and other bodily samples for future analysis. The study aimed to recruit volunteers with no neurological disorder who are 50 years and older, and to include adults 20 years and older who have first degree relative with a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. And this is really important because multiple sclerosis has a much earlier disease presentation. But I think what is equally important here is that we'll be studying individuals that are also at risk for neurological disease, perhaps they have the same genetic mutation as someone else, but yet they never get the disease. And so what is it about them that makes them different? And this is, I think, the most important part of the study that we can gather the information together to really change our perspective in understanding diseases. Andre, when can we expect to have results from this study? We estimate that the first interesting results will begin to present in five years. And then, because of the longitudinal nature of this study, 
the study will continue to generate results for years and decades to come, this study is not only for our generation, this study will continue to inform the next generation of caregivers at Cleveland Clinic. Tara, and what type of treatment changes might happen because of this study? This study will completely revolutionize our treatment approaches. For example, we currently use models of amyloid pathology in the brain to understand Alzheimer's disease. And while this has taught us a lot about disease progression, drug therapies targeted for amyloid plaque pathology have not yet succeeded in producing a cure. The information in this study will be able to capture this key time point. We as scientists don't want to simply be historians of neurological disease, meaning what happens to an individual after they're diagnosed with a neurological disease. We want to prevent disease and we want to cure disease. And this unique, never been seen before glimpse into that silent phase will help facilitate those strategies. We will be using a series of modalities to understand and more comprehensively and thoroughly study this phase. And this will be a monumental interdisciplinary effort. But this is what we do at the Cleveland Clinic. This is who we are. And this is why I think this study is so outstanding and will definitely change the trajectory of our treatment strategies. Thank you. And one of the great things about our organization is that we serve so many diverse populations. Buddy, could you speak about our Florida communities in relation to the brain study? How will their participation make care more equitable? Florida is the third most populous state in our nation and it has a very high diversity index. Uh, having Cleveland Clinic Florida part of the brain study will help enroll volunteers front across different demographics, but will also ensure that minorities, especially Hispanic and Native American minorities, are included in the study. What other opportunities do you see with this study and our neurological services in Florida? There will be great opportunities to leverage the results of the brain study and to launch several other neurologic studies at Cleveland Clinic Florida. And having Cleveland Clinic Florida part of the brain study will also expand the already existing interaction across the enterprise between our caregivers and make sure that we continue to provide the best care to our patients with the most complex neurologic diseases. Andre, how much of the brain study is already funded? Uh, what is the role of philanthropy both now and in the future? The role of philanthropy here is to support this study. We have enough money to establish this study and to carry us into the next couple of years. But the true interesting data, the information that we need out of this study will come over time, longitudinally over five, 10 and more years. Therefore, we need our donors to support this study today and to continue to support it tomorrow. Now I would like to hear from everyone on this final uh, question. How can we disrupt neurological disease in our lifetime? To Andre's point, there are more than 100 trials from all around the world that aim to treat Alzheimer's disease alone at cost of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. But most aim to treat the symptoms, not the root cause of the disease. And the uh, question is why? Simply, it is because the root causes are not known. And this is where this Cleveland Clinic Brain Study will come to change the whole thing. We will identify the root causes in the silent phase, preceding the onset of the symptoms, and we will work with other groups from all over the world to test, design, and get the approval for drugs that will stop neurodegenerative disorder and eventually prevent them. I truly believe the culture and the team of teams we have at the Cleveland Clinic will allow us to disrupt neurologic diseases. Identifying predictors of disease, neurologic diseases, and modifying them and treating them before they cause damage to the brain and to the nervous system 
is what needs to be done. And I'm very optimistic that the brain study will allow us to achieve that goal. We've been working very closely with the state of Ohio to expand our research footprint here at the Cleveland Clinic. And how apropos um, is the current uh, information that will be garnered from this Cleveland Brain Health Study? I think this information will be unprecedented. And not only do we have the smartest people to understand this interdisciplinary information from inflammation to genetics to brain imaging, but we will also recruit the brightest minds to complement the already state-of-the-art innovative research going on. And this is how we will continue to make a difference here at the Cleveland Clinic. I think that uh, Tara has touched on a very good point, which is the need for more discovery. If we look at our track record as a scientific community globally, the failure rate at developing new drugs that will prevent the progression of a neurological disease, for example, Parkinson's disease, has been 100%. We are probably trying to develop drugs against targets that are actually not the causes of brain disorders because we don't know the causes. This study is ambitious enough, large enough, that will allow us to actually learn what those targets are so that we can collaborate with our colleagues in the LRI and across the world to develop the treatments of tomorrow. It was my pleasure to speak with all of you. I've never been more excited and confident about our ability to transform care. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. To those of you joining us today, to give or to enroll in the brain study, please log on to our web pages. Now I am pleased to introduce Lara Kalafaitis, chair of our Philanthropy Institute. Thank you, Dr. Mohalovich for your leadership and for an inspiring discussion around the Cleveland Clinic Brain Study. And to our audience, I extend my own welcome to Cleveland Clinic experience, whether you're joining us by mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Once upon a time, such devices were the stuff of science fiction. Today, they're commonplace. In healthcare, as in technology, advances move seemingly at the speed of light, and what was once impossible is now reality. That's why we chose our theme today, Mission Possible. With that theme, there's no better place to start than right here in the lab of Dr. Sean Stoffer. Dr. Stoffer is the director of the Center for Therapeutics Discovery at Cleveland Clinic. His team's lab here in the Lerner Research Institute is a hope factory. Dr. Stoffer and his colleagues are translating basic science discoveries into urgently needed new therapeutics for patients suffering from a range of diseases. In the last year, the team has been working on everything from an Alzheimer's drug to prostate cancer therapy. Talk about mission possible. You'll find many other examples of the impossible made possible across our global healthcare system. There's the robotic single port kidney transplant, the first in the world performed here at Cleveland Clinic just a few years ago. The procedure enables all surgical instruments and the donor kidney to be placed through one small abdominal incision. That means less recovery time and better outcomes for our patients. Our trailblazing partnership with Maria Shriver and the Women's Alzheimer's Movement, we're recognizing that women are more prone to Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. So this partnership is working to identify female-focused ways to treat and prevent Alzheimer's and other diseases. And of course, the Discovery Accelerator, our new partnership with IBM that will harness the power of artificial intelligence, the hybrid cloud, and quantum computing to advance the pace of discovery in healthcare. At Cleveland Clinic, innovation has been in our DNA for more than 100 years, and our philanthropic partners empower us to dream bigger reach further and push harder in our second century. Your support saves lives. Your support changes lives. And your support makes the impossible possible. Earlier this year, we celebrated the culmination of the power of every one centennial campaign. It started with the idea that one person can make a difference. 375,000 of you stepped up and what a difference you made. 
It was the most successful fundraising effort in our history. Have a look. What started with one grew to more than 800,000. The power of one became the power of everyone. We really need the support to do phenomenal work and then to translate it back to the patients who desperately need our help. It just feels so good knowing that their program has had my back and has had their hand in helping me create my future. Innovative treatment is what brought us, but we got so much more than what we had hoped for. You can tell it's not something they're doing it because it's their job, it's coming from their heart. Together, we have impacted 100 million patient visits in the last decade. Each visit, a chance to save or change a life. And we've impacted millions more through our research and education programs worldwide. Thank you. Because of you, the power of everyone will continue to light our way. On behalf of all of us, I extend my sincere appreciation to our volunteer leaders who guided the campaign. And we're so deeply grateful to all of you who demonstrated the power of everyone and made a difference for our patients, caregivers, and communities around the world. Through the Centennial Campaign, you showed us what's possible, and the momentum continues as our mission is now more important than ever, caring for life, researching for health, and educating those who serve. Going forward, your continued support will allow us to achieve even a greater impact. I'd like to share a peek into the future so you can see what is impossible today can be made possible tomorrow if we work together. First, the countdown has begun for a neurological moonshot and Cleveland Clinic is the launch pad. As you learned earlier, the Cleveland Clinic brain study will go further than any other study to identify targets for preventing and curing Alzheimer's, epilepsy, Parkinson's, and other neurological diseases. We're also building a new hub for Cleveland Clinic's Neurological Institute. This will be a fully integrated neurological hospital the first of its kind, complete with facilities for inpatient and outpatient care, as well as innovation labs to develop the neurological treatments of tomorrow and then share them with the world. To improve outcomes for patients with neurological disorders, we're shooting for the moon and philanthropy will help provide the rocket fuel to get us there. Second, we'll double our research capacity via the new Innovation District to ensure more breakthroughs for more patients. In the Innovation District, forward thinking will be fast-tracked. Here, breakthroughs in the lab will be quickly translated to diagnostics and treatments for patients. And researchers and clinicians will collaborate more creatively and intently in order to improve the health for people worldwide. In the heart of the Innovation District, you'll find the Discovery Accelerator. This advanced computing technology will allow us to conduct big data research that can answer monumental questions in front of us. Questions like, who is at risk for cardiovascular disease? And how can the next generation of immunotherapies turn someone's own body into their most powerful weapon to fight cancer? Big ideas in the Innovation District require big investments, and philanthropic partnerships will be essential to the success of this exciting initiative. Third, the future of healthcare is rooted in strong, healthy communities, and we are committed to heal, hire, and invest in every location we serve. Our new Center for Maternal and Infant Health is one example, and it will proactively address health disparities among mothers and babies. In addition, we're creating educational pathways and training programs that lead to healthcare careers, like our Aspire program, provides high school students from underrepresented populations the mentoring, training, and financial support they need to pursue a career in nursing. And we continue to create more opportunities for our caregivers to grow with us as we make Cleveland Clinic the best place to work in healthcare. Philanthropy will help further strengthen the ties between Cleveland Clinic and the communities we serve. Finally, 
it's our responsibility to deliver world-class healthcare to as many people as possible. So we'll grow to meet them where they are. In March, we opened Cleveland Clinic London, the most technologically advanced hospital in the UK. Meanwhile, in the US, we're expanding in Ohio, growing in Florida, and forming new alliances to deliver world-class care to more people. And don't forget the power of telemedicine as we expand our virtual visit capabilities and enhance the experience for our patients. Remember, none of this is possible without your support. As we pursue these priorities, every gift of every size brings us that much closer to new possibilities across care, research, and education. Let me introduce you to one donor whose many gifts support our mission. She's been selected as this year's recipient of the George Cryle Senior Award. She embodies extraordinary service, long-standing generosity, and a legacy commitment to Cleveland Clinic. I'm pleased to present this year's Cryle Award to Dr. Jenny Brown of Cleveland. Let's hear from her. I think my story is simple. It's kind of the American dream. My parents were Hungarian immigrants. We lived on Buckeye Road. At that time, there were very few women in chemistry. But you can imagine what a fascinating career. I was immediately put to work solving problems. I became president of the National Society for Spectroscopy, and it was, I would say, the most wonderful career one could imagine, fulfilling every aim or goal I ever had. And perhaps that's part of the reason why I became very committed to and passionate about trying to help others. My special friend throughout my school years was a girl named Rosemary, and she and I were like sisters. Rosemary's life was seriously affected by multiple sclerosis. So I went to the clinic and I met Dr. Rudick. We decided to set up a fund for the Multiple Sclerosis Center for patient care for both patients and families. He and I formed a steering committee at the Mellon Center and I pledged a quite significant grant. It was really so fulfilling for me to see that Rosemary was taken care of. I think we always are most philanthropic for causes that we love or that we believe in very strongly ourselves. My husband got Parkinson's and two years after that I got Parkinson's. <laughs> so neurodegenerative diseases have risen to the top of my philanthropic interest because they are devastating. That's why I have now started also to have an endowment in the neurodegenerative area with these diseases now that are most in need. If you can help by giving of your time, then you should do that. As a board member, I'm first and foremost a trustee. Yeah, from that, I worked on committees and helping by going to meetings, sharing your knowledge as much as you can is a very important part of life. The Cryle Award is clearly a symbol of the kind of excellence you find at Cleveland Clinic because Dr. Kryle was one of the forerunners of medical research. He knew that without the research, you can't be all that you could be. I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had that allow me to give back time and money and hopefully a lot of help but I'm also awed at this particular award because it is an incredible one. If you have had the things in life that you wanted, if you've been able to achieve, try to make someone else happy. Try to do something in life that will leave a lasting mark. I think it's nothing more rewarding. Congratulations and thank you, Dr. Brown. Your compassion and generosity inspire us. In closing, many thanks again to all of you for joining Cleveland Clinic Experience and for your commitment to Cleveland Clinic. I'll leave you with a few incredible stories about how your generosity makes so much possible. Thank you. It is fascinating to actually operate on a patient prior to birth. This is truly advancement of medicine. Recently, we have completed an amazing 
fetal heart surgery with a great outcome. To do the intervention, keep the fetus attached to the mother, and then live for the next few months until delivery. That is sometimes con considered science fiction, but it is real, we've done it. These programs cannot be born without a true investment. This is the future for many of the congenital anomalies. Imagine that these high-risk babies, when they're born, they are not high-risk anymore. It's a reality that will change the life of babies born with congenital heart disease. Philanthropy plays a key role in bringing the next thing to the forefront. HIPEC is one example. HIPEC stands for hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, where we have cancer that's spread throughout the abdomen. After we've surgically removed all of it, we do a chemo treatment where we take chemotherapy, heat it up, and then circulate it around the abdomen. It's been shown to improve overall survival, so they do better from their cancer with that one intervention. Philanthropy in HIPEC is more important now even than it was 10 years ago. There are a lot of other cancers that we're investigating, uterine cancer and high-grade endometrial cancers. There's new things happening, really exciting treatments, so that's very exciting to me. When people have sleep disorders, they put themselves at risk for serious health consequences. Diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, even epilepsy can be triggered or activated by sleep loss. The sleep app is called Sleep by Cleveland Clinic. It screens for the four most common sleep disorders. It allows the user to screen themselves and see their scores immediately and get tips on what to do next. We wouldn't have the app uh, without philanthropy. Not only the financial resources, but the great partnership that we've had with our donor. Anatomy requires the students to have a certain level of spatial ability. Virtual reality has allowed us to give those views of anatomy to the students and they get to interact with it. Philanthropy has really contributed to not just the development of the tools, but the ability to implement them into a learning experience. It's exciting to be in a position in medical education where we have access to all this phenomenal technology. It's enabling us to become really well-trained and well-rounded physician scientists. A mobile stroke treatment unit is like a mobile emergency department that specializes in stroke. We bring all the expertise in the emergency department for stroke care and all the technology of CT imaging, laboratory testing to the patient's doorstep. And then we're able to evaluate them to deliver life-saving treatments or disability-saving treatments as quickly as possible. Our time to treatment is 40 minutes faster compared to traditional ambulance to the emergency department. Time does make a big difference. Mobile stroke care reduces disability and can save lives. Seeing patients in front of you resolving symptoms, it's a, a sight you won't forget. Philanthropy is noble. It is money given for the goodness of humanity. One thing impacts another thing impacts another thing, and you don't even know what your impact is gonna have. It's so exciting to have passions align. That would not happen without a collaboration through philanthropy. It is the cornerstone of what we do. It's really the spark that drives this place. Mm -hmm.